Welcome to this video conference coverage program highlighting key data on multi-cancer early detection presented at the 2024 American Association for Cancer Research Annual Meeting in San Diego, California. The 2024 American Society of Clinical Oncology Annual Meeting in Chicago, Illinois and the 2024 National Comprehensive Cancer Network Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. In this series of six chapters, our experts, internal medicine physician Richard Whittington and oncologist Gautam Agarwal will discuss the most recent data on MSED tests presented at these oncology conferences, including clinical trial data, real-world experience, and post hoc analyses from previous clinical trials, modeled benefits of MSED test usage, novel tests in development, and the impact of MSED screening on quality of life and health and screening disparities. Well, that first block of information was interesting. Now we'll take our next look. This one will involve real-world evidence, case reports, and follow-up studies on multi-cancer early detection tests. Thank you, Dr. Agarwal, for continuing on. Thanks a lot. So in this analysis of early real-world experience, you know, this is a study that was presented at AACR by Abrams et al. Real-world experience with repeated MCED testing was looked at in about 6,000 individuals whose first test result was no cancer signal detected. This demonstrated the first real-world evaluation of repeat MSET testing, gallery testing, showing the potential value of adding repeat MSET screening. The time frame for repeat testing occurred between 10 and 18 months from the initial MSET testing. The cancel signal detection rate was 0.45% in the repeat test cohort. It was around 0.95% in the first test. Mostly early stage and without screening options are the ones that were found. 75% of the diagnosis cancers are cancers without USPT, US uh, PSTF recommended screening. The accuracy of the cancer signal detected was 100% on the first prediction. Uh, so this study showed repeat testing may improve early detection of ca multiple cancer types, including those without uh, United States Preventative Service Task Force guidelines. In another study by Chaudhary et al., this is a major study in the field of multi-cancer early detection. This is an update from the a at the AACR on a case report of Detect A participants with pre-malignant conditions. Detect A uh, had an enrollment of around 10,000 women aged 60 to 75 without any previous history of cancer, originally published in 2020. This was an update in a case report in those with pre-malignant conditions who had precancerous conditions diagnosed during a diagnostic workup for a positive cancer seek result. In a post hoc analysis, three individuals with positive cancer signal detected found to have clinically significant precancerous lesions, surgical interventions prevented cancer development. And all participants, all patients, were cancer free at follow up. The cancer seek test is the multi cancer early detection test studied in the Detect A study was the forerunner to the cancer guard test. Another study by Mahal et al. was presented at the AACR meeting this year. A targeted methylation-based multi-cancer early detection blood test preferentially detects high-grade prostate cancer and minimizes overdiagnosis. Data demonstrating the power of gallery to differentially, preferentially detect high-grade clinically significant prostate cancer over indolent cases. In two independent prospective studies, MSED tests preferentially detected high-grade clinically significant prostate cancer. A cancer signal de detection result with prostate CSO prediction generally indicates the presence of aggressive prostate cancer and should lead to prompt diagnostic workup. Marinac et al. looking at multi-cancer early detection test performance actually in cancer survivors. Pathfinder study originally had participants greater than 50 without clinical suspicion of cancer. 6,500 samples were analyzed with a refined multi-cancer early detection test. Patients were stratified by cancer survivor status, meaning that they were treated greater than three years prior to the study 
versus people who had never had prior cancer. MSET test detected both cancer recurrences and new primaries in cancer survivors for whom multiple years had elapsed since their original diagnosis, potentially expanding surveillance options for this group. Cancers in the cancer survivor not detected by MSEDs were predominantly early stage. Test performance was similar in those with and without a cancer history. A famous researcher, Charlie Swanton from the UK, recently had another abstract at AACR that looked at the prognostic significance of blood-based multi-cancer detection in cell-free DNA and a four-year outcomes an analysis. What they saw, this exhibited a four-year overall survival follow-up demonstrating the prognostic significance of detecting cancer using a refined version of the test. Almost 70% of participants diagnosed with cancer were alive after four years. MSED test detected cancer signal in 85% of the 782 participants with known cancer that died during follow-up. Accounting for effect of cancer type and stage, no cancer signal detected had better survival than cancer signal detected as expected. The tumor methylated fraction increased with clinical stage and was lower for no cancer signal detected cancers relative to cancer signal detected cancers for all stages. This confirmed the prognostic value of cancer signal detected compared to no cancer signal detected by the refined MSED test for participants with cancer. If not detected, potentially this would be less aggressive cancers. Well, there certainly was a lot of very interesting, important information for us primary care physicians in there. I think there's many salient points that need to be made. There's a really big one I'll want your opinion on at the end, but I'll go through some of the detail here. Um, Multi-cancer early detection could catch preferentially high-grade prostate cancer. I think that's valuable to all of us um, in primary care. I think that knowing that the prognostic value of cancer signal detected compared to non-cancer signal detected by the refined multi-cancer early detection test for participants with cancer is important. Um, I think that the idea that we can use cancer different differentiation analysis to rule out large numbers of precancer diseases and benign tumor types is very important. I think one of the most important things I gathered from this that's important in my practice specifically is the idea we now have some real data on when to retest patients um, after they've had their initial multi-cancer early detection tests. I I'm interested, Dr. Agawal, if you have some opinions on how we might use that data for different to groups of patients to decide on perhaps six months, one year, two years. What do you think? So I think the data is still a little bit immature, but I think this is a good step in the right direction of deciding that. What we ultimately need to do is assess a patient's individual cancer risk, and we're getting to that point. So if you have a patient that we know the individual cancer risk is very high, for instance, of developing pancreatic cancer, some of the data that we have presented or seen presented would indicate that if they have a high pancreatic risk, we may want to have testing done at a more increased cadence, so frequency, every six months, for instance. Whereas if their risk of, for instance, uh, one of those more aggressive cancers is relatively low based on their individualized risk, whether that's a tool based upon their phenotype or whether it's their germline predilection for it, they may not need to get tested as often. And so individualizing that cancer risk assessment is going to be very important to being able to determine the cadence, but in general, to take all of those into account, likely we may end up on the cadence of every year, likely in the future, to be tested by just like similar screenings for breast cancer, prostate cancer, etc. Another thing that's important, I think, from this summary is that the cancer signal detected is typically in cancers that are going to be more aggressive. For instance, prostate cancer was a good example. If you get a signal that's positive for prostate cancer, it's very important to take that signal seriously, exhaust the workup, and figure out uh, you know, what you're dealing with there.